today's today agenda like um, i will talk about uh, the clause 4.1 and i'll also like uh, share some of the case studies and i will also also answer your question so this will be a short session maybe around uh, 30 minute session okay and uh, at the end i will also answer like your key okay Good. I'll be answering your query at the end. A very good evening to everyone. I hope you're able to see me. So we are live. So let's get started. So this is a new initiative. In this new initiative, what uh, I'll be doing, I'll be sharing like few of the important clauses uh, of IATF 16949, and uh, I'll be sharing. I'll be like I'll also show you the case study. So let's talk about this clause number 4.1, which is context of the organization. Understanding the context of the organization and context, like. So if you talk about this clause, like this clause will be applicable for ISO 9001 to 115, and this clause is also applicable for IATF 16949 to 116. So if you see, like this clause will be applicable for both, right? So uh, like if you talk about IATF, so IATF will be basically whatever it, it, it is mentioned in ISO 9001 to 115. The same clause is there being referred in IATF 16949 to 116. That means there is no IATF does not have additional clause requirement. So in clause 4.1, which is basically a part of ISO 1, the same clause is there in the IIT 16949. Okay. So let's get into this and uh, try to understand what's the meaning of this understanding the organization and its context. So one thing which is very, very important that you need to understand the context. So what do you mean by context? So context, we say like the issues and the gaps, right? That's what we say the context. One thing you see very, very important. Let's say you want to grow in your career. Okay, you want to go from point A to point B. So if you want to go from point A to point B, what will you identify? What will you identify? You will identify your gaps. You will identify your issues, right? So that is very, very important. You want to become plant head, quality head, production head, new world development head, supplier head, quality engineer, Whatever that is that you want, or you want to become consultant or trainer. So whatever you want to become, right? Let's say you are a point A, you want to go from go to point B. So what will you identify? You will identify your gaps. You will identify your like what is what are those skills which you require. So that is your step number one. So if step number one will be good enough, no, step number one will not be good enough. Step number one definitely is to identify like what's the gaps as per whatever you wherever you want to go, you identify the gaps, right? What is step number two? You'll make some action plan because if you don't make the action plan, then how you're going to achieve that? Step number three, if action plan is good enough, no action plan is not good enough. You also need monitoring. Okay, you also need monitoring. You also need like a, a review mechanism, right? So that you can take the corrections, you can take, you can, you know, uh, do the corrections accordingly. And then there are like, um, you can say uh, step four, then you get to see some results, right? So this is what is very, very important. So if you see like in the similar way in the industry, what was happening before ISO 9215 or IT 16949 You want to improve the context of the organization. You want to actually identify work on the gaps, which is there in your organization. Because unless and until you basically focus on the real gaps, the, the, you know, the certificate itself will not have any value. Let's say the similar thing you need to do for your organization. If we talk about your organization, then definitely there will be few gaps in your organization quality management system. So what are those gaps? There could be multiple gaps. For example, your fibers might be poor. Your internal reaction analysis might not be appropriate. You might have weak tooling management system or there might be weak communication, new power development might not be very good. Uh, there might not be a good system of new power development. Your marketing might be weak. The training and development department may not be appropriate. Employee motivation could be on the lower side. Now, if you see what are these, these are gaps. So what the IATF want, what ISO want, basically what it wants. They basically want that you focus on the real gaps, you focus on the real issues, because if you actually focus on the real issues and gaps. So what will happen after one year, two year down the line? If not, there are possibilities that you will work on those issues because these issues as you identify will be seen by consultant, trainers, 
lead auditors, management, and then there is like expectation that you will have some action plan, there will be some monitoring, and that's how you will get the result. So for that purpose, this basically clause like context of the organization has been included, where you identify your context, you identify your issues, so that after a year or two, what happened? You will be working on the actual issue. You'll be working on the actual problems, right? So that it's not just certificate hanging on the wall, but you also that you worked on the real issues because many times, if you see people hide their gaps, people hide their issues. But here ISO and IATF is basically motivating you or is trying to say that do not hide, put those things not below the table, above the table. So that everyone know what are the gaps, what are the issues in which on which you need to work upon, right? So this is the reason why this clause is very, very important. Okay, so let's try to understand. So we'll try to understand what's the clause requirement. I'll also show you the, like uh, a quick case study also. And then I'll also tell you that how you can implement this particular clause requirement. So what does this clause say? Understanding the organization and its context, okay? The organization shall. So wherever shall is mentioned in IIT or ISO, that means it's a mandatory requirement, right? Although if the documented word is not written, then definitely and like uh, you may not show that as a documented evidence, but however, having said that, if shell is written, then it is expected that you need to show that as an evidence. And if you show that as an evidence, if it is required, then absolutely with documentary evidence, then it become more appropriate, right? So wherever shell is written, that's a mandatory requirement, right? What do you need to identify? So you need to identify what? You need to identify in external and internal issues that are relevant to its purpose. So you need to identify external issues. Now, what are external issues? We'll look at look at some examples, which are not like internal within your organization, which are external. We'll also have a look at example. There are like some external issues like political, economical, social, like. Many of these are external issues, which you may not have direct influence over that. So what do we say? External issues where you might not have direct influence. Those are called external issues. Internal issues within your organization in which you have direct control. So that what we say is an internal issue. So if you say external issues that which is happening outside your organization and not necessarily outside your organization, but in one which you don't have like direct control. Okay. Like for example, of war. You are in India or you are in, in a particular nation and you may not have direct control between war. Uh, you know, there's a war between uh, Russia and Ukraine, okay, uh, let's say. And you may not have direct control over that, right? Or which party <laughs> uh, might win one the election. You may not have direct control, although you can influence to a certain extent, but you, you don't have direct control on the outcome, right? Or environmental regulation, changes in the environmental regulation. So generally outside... Uh, like issues are those which is outside the organization you might not have like a direct control over that okay when you say internal issues internal issues are happening within your organization within your organization scope and uh, you have like uh, direct um, uh, control right you have direct you have direct control over that right for example direct control in terms of any issues in terms of like weak areas in terms of any problems is happening within your organization We'll also have a look at an example so that you get more clarity. So what is required? You identify these issues. Why do you need to identify these issues? Because if you identify these issues, then there are possibilities that you will work on the actual gaps. And if you work on these actual gaps, that's how you actually make progress. That's how you actually identify the real problems which is there in your organization and so that you can work upon those. And most important, those issues which have identified need to be relevant to the purpose and strategic direction. Where do you want to go? Like, let's say your organization want to become number one affordable solution. Then in that case, your issues and your focus will be on how you can reduce your rejection, how you can increase your productivity, how you can lower your cost. So that's where you'll be focusing upon. So whatever is your strategic direction, strategic direction is something where do you want to go? It could be that we want to become number one in terms of cost or in affordability, or maybe you might have some, you know, high end product like where you want to uh, like fulfill the people aspiration or want to massage the, you know, ego <laughs> of people. Like, let's say I want to be a, become a that brand. 
uh, where people have aspirational value, right? Let's say Ferrari, BMW. So they, they might have good cars and best cars in the world, but it does not necessarily mean that they are they are the world best, right? <laughs> because they have perceived value because they are such they are they are they are so much costly. And they might have perceived value, and people those who have like uh, will have this impression that okay, I have I'm rich, and you know and they have this ego massage uh, will be there. So some brands might have this aspirational value where they want to, how they want to position themselves. They want to position themselves as an affordable solution. They want to position themselves as a premium solution. They want to position themselves as a egocentric brand or they want to position themselves as a safety, uh, like uh, as a strategic direction. Let's, for example, Volkswagen, if you see, okay, and uh, Toyota, you see, uh, like uh, Toyota is more focused toward quality and reliability. Volkswagen is more focused on the, let's say, safety. Uh, again, Maruti is more focused on affordability. Uh, Tata Motors, if you see in India, they are now more focused on the, you know, sports utility vehicle segment and now uh, also focusing on the, you know, variety of, uh, variety. Like, so whatever is your strategic direction, you identify those issues in those contexts, okay? Also, that affects the ability to achieve intended result uh, of its quality memory system, right? You also focus on those issues which can have uh, like impact on your quality memory system, right? Those issues need to be prioritized because it might be that your operator might say that or your people might say, okay, I need, uh, uh, you are, you know, uh, need to, the motion need to give me the, uh, let's say, uh, five-star food. <laughs> That may not be directly linked with your, you know, strategic direction because yeah, definitely you want uh, food to be uh, like a good quality food or nutritious food, but it need not necessarily, necessarily to be a five star food, right? Or you let's say your employee says that I want you to, you know, give me uh, like every individual should be given a car, a personal car, right? Why we should travel in bus? That might not be linked to your strategic direction, or that might not be directly uh, be uh, focused on the uh, your, you know. Uh, and the quality management system. So you also need to identify like what issues are relevant, what issues are not relevant. Having said that, who will identify what issues are relevant, what issues are not relevant. So here, the role of your like management or here the role of your cross-functional team, CFT, so cross-functional team, which will comprise of uh, like different departments, head of the department or also like management uh, could be a part of this team. So they may identify which issue is linked with our study direction, which issue like we can accept, which issue is not relevant. And that's where they can identify that these issues we need to prioritize. Okay. The organization shall mandatory comment what to do, monitor and review information about these external and internal issues. So you need to monitor as well. So when you say monitor, what's the difference between monitor and review? So if you see monitor, this word monitor, like <laughs> what does monitor does? <laughs> And this board, you know, uh, you see the, in the classes, in the class, they are monitor. So what monitor does? They monitor, right? So monitoring is more, uh, you know, at, uh, at a defined frequency, as per certain uh, parameter, you have some monitoring system in place. So when you say monitoring, that means there is, there are some criteria, right? There are some set criteria, which you will be monitoring at a defined frequency. When you say monitoring, it's more towards the defined frequency. When we say, Review information. So when you say review, that means you will do do data analysis, right? Or you will see the, you will uh, review the uh, review those information. You, you will do analysis of the, those information. You will study and you will come up with uh, some uh, solution or come up with some action plan. Some action plan. So when we say review information, it is more towards like study and coming up with some action plan. So there's a slight difference between these two terms: monitoring is more related to like um, at some defined frequency you have some monitoring system in place the like way you monitor your uh, uh, anyone's progress or report card or you monitor you know your, uh, your defects at regular interval so when you say monitor it is at a defined frequency when you say review information it's more linked with some study of that data and coming up with some sort of action plan so definitely both are required right both are required so in this clause, what do you understand? In this clause, you need to identify what your internal and external issues. Okay. What are the methodologies? I'll talk about that. So let's see and move forward and see how 
or like we can do that, right? So context of action, I, as I talked about, is a combination of internal and external issues that has, has an effect on organization approach to developing and achieving its objective. So what is context of the organization? So context of the could be related to internal. They could be internal issues. They could be external issues. And they will have an impact, okay, on your, on your organization. And because of that, you may or may not be able to achieve your organization objectives or purpose, right? That's the context. Now, if you see, there's one way, there are two ways, basically. One way you identify the uh, through SWOT analysis. What is this SWOT? Internal issues are identified by strength and weak weakness. So if you see, this is being studied in, like we taught in MBA also. So weak area, weak, weak area. What is a weak area? If you focus on a weak area, let's say your weak area is you're not good in quality systems. I'm talking about your personal weak area. You might not be good in communication. You might not good be in uh, auditing skills. You might not be good in uh, problem solving or some technical knowledge. You might be lacking confidence or English spoken skills, whatever it is. If you identify those now, that is that that's the step number one and there are possibilities if you identify then it is expected the next step will be you will have some action plan the next step there should be some monitoring the next step you know you will review that information take some action take some action and then there are possibilities that you might get results right in the similar way you need to identify what is the weak area in your organization whatever it could be right five is poor rejection unless is not carried out whatever it is right you can also like mentioned in the comment, if you're watching this, um, you can also comment that what do you think is a weak area in your organization which needs to be improved? Nothing wrong. We're not telling that we're, we're not talking bad about our company. It's not that we're talking bad about our company. It's that we, are, we identify the weak area because that's step number one. If you identify weak area, that's step number one. Then if you accept that something is a weak, then only you can improve. If you don't accept, then how anyone can improve? The first thing is you accept that yes, there is a, a scope for improvement. You can also type in the comment, like what do you think is your organization weak area, right? <laughs> okay. And then uh, these are excellent internal issues. So one methodology is identify strength and weakness. Strength you need to maintain. Strength uh, will also look at an example. The excellent issues could be like opportunities and threats. So opportunities are those activities which are happening outside the organization because of your business, because of which your business can rise, because of you, you can get, you know, uh, good business or your company can grow. Threats are those, like because of which your business can go down, right? So we'll have a look at an example so that you get better understanding. And before that, we also look at another way. This is what ISO 19 also suggests. You can also identify internal issues through values, culture, knowledge, and performance. That could be within the organization. And external issues could be in the form of pastel. What is pastel? Political, economical, social, technology, environment, legal, and it could be related to international, national, regional, local uh, laws or where your company is operating. So if you see, there's a political like there's a change in the like uh, uh, change politically like uh, government gets changed. Like you see in Africa, okay, there was change in government because of that the some businessman had to suffer, and you see like uh, because of this political tussle between uh, U.S. and the Russia, they are businessmen, they have to suffer, right? So economy, so if their economy is not doing well, their economy is down, uh, then also there will be an impact on your product. Social, that means like there is social agitation. Okay, let's say people don't want the, the they think that this is a hazardous factory or that can result into a bad impact on their village or environment. Okay, and then there could be social factor, social pressure, and it has happened in, you know, in um, uh, many parts wherein the companies are not allowed to operate because of the social impact or social pressure. Technology, change in the technology, right? Technology uh, do get changed with time. So if there's a change in technology uh, and um, let's say your uh, electric cars, okay, now diesel engine or your petrol engine, <laughs> like they are getting obsolete. So there's a change in technology. So uh, I know many of my clients, like they are worried. Um, they may, they are thinking that what will happen out of five, 10 years down the line, those who are in, in you know, engine related parts. Environmental, there's some change in the environmental regulations or some environmental like concerns are there. Okay, and because of that also, they may not get permissions to operate in certain area or there are change in the you know, environmental conditions, environmental regulations. 
and then there are legal requirements like BS3, BS4, or exhaust, exhaust you know, that um, uh, you can have that much exhaust requirements are changed, or the, the legal requirements are getting changed, or something is, gets banned, uh, some substance gets banned, and then you may not be able to sell that product in that particular country. So you also need to keep that in that like eye on that, right? Because that can have an impact. So generally, if you see pest analysis is generally considered as an excellent issue. And who takes care of that? In general, management generally takes care of that. Generally, the people within the organization, they take care of internal issues and uh, management in general takes care of external issues, right? So document information, although this word documented information, word is not there, but still uh, definitely uh, because shell is there and uh, you need to have some evidence. So you need a list of internal exchange issues and you can also do risk analysis. Although risk analysis mentioned in 6.1, but you can still do risk analysis um, in 6.1 also, you can do risk analysis and how to do that. But here also in this particular format also, you can like combine the risk analysis uh, of with the internal and external issues. What could be the potential risk analysis for internal and external issues that also uh, can be identified, right? How to implement this clause requirement? So you create a cross-functional team which decides which consists of department head and top management because they need to decide <coughs> what is uh, uh, they need to decide upon like um, what are the issues and which issues need to be considered, which issues need to be prioritized. You brainstorm and identify what international issues are relevant to the organization. You identify that and then you carry out the risk analysis and review and monitor with action plan at regular interval. The idea is if you are focused on identification of internal and external issues, you will be taking action prior before it creates a big trouble for your organization. That's the main purpose. If you focus on the real issues, after two years, three years down the line, you will not just have certificate hanging on the wall, but in actual, the issues and the problems will be resolved. And that is what you need to do, okay? So at regular interval, maybe at six months or one year, this need to be identified and then action plan need to be made, right? That's what the purpose of this particular clause. Some companies are, an organization are implementing this in a sincere way and some companies are doing in a, on paper itself. So definitely like uh, if you really want, uh, if organization really want benefit out of this clause, they need to understand and implement this requirement in a structured way. That's where they can get the full advantage of this particular clause requirement, okay? Okay, so let's uh, now, you know, uh, look at the, <clears throat> look at the example. So I'll show you the example because if you see example, that's how you learn more and uh, it will be easier for you to understand, okay? So I'll show you the example because if you see the example, that's how you learn more, right? <clears throat> okay. So let's have a look at example. Okay, so I'll show you the example, right? Okay, so I'm sharing my screen with you. So like this is a simpler example, like there could be more complex example because I don't want to com com complicate the thing. So that's the reason I'm giving this simple example. What is this list of internal and external issues? Okay, and the methodology which is being used is SWOT analysis. What is SWOT analysis? So S stands for strength. Your good point. So strength is something you need to maintain. W stands for your weak area, which needs to be improved. That's W is a weak area. Now these are external issues, opportunities like which are good for companies business. That's the meaning of uh, opportunities. And threats are like because of which business may go down. Okay. And then you have control in place. So when I say control in place, like uh, what is the, how do you sustain that? And how do you basically improve and do mitigation? Mitigation means how exactly you make sure that these threats or these issues does not impact your organization. And you have some action plan in place. Okay. And you also have this, uh, 
updated and the review frequency every six months or one year. It should not go beyond one year. And then at the next date, you update that this is updated by the cross-functional team, right? Now let's see the example. Like, let's say the strength, like this company has in-house tool room facility, employee friendly policies, multi-skill employee, strong financial. And here you also give like control. How do you say that these companies have all this and you also need to sustain this? How you can sustain? You can sustain through some procedure, some work instruction, some audit, some documentation, some review mechanism. That's how you can control. And if you talk about weak area, there, in where, uh, there you need to um, make the action plan and then auditor, lead auditor will also look at the action plan and uh, what's the status of that. He'll be interested in looking at that. So strength is something which you need to continuously maintain. For example, tool room facility, machine related technology, you have mass list, you have patent, you have procedure for tooling management, employee friendly, you have HR policies, uh, employee motivation policies, procedure multi -skill, multi, for multi-skill employees. You have skill matrix, you have procedure for strong financial, you have balance sheet, P and L, like that reference you can give. Now, which is more important? Obviously, weak area, which is definitely which is more important, which needs to be improved. That's you identify the reaction handling is poor. Shop flow visualization is not good. Maintenance planning is weak. Responsive deployment is not good. Now, here the auditor will expect and what they will expect that uh, you, you need to have some control mechanism right and there should be some action plan reference let's say for example rejection handling is poor then the auditor will expect that there has to be some action plan for rejection analysis and how you have reduced those uh, like uh, rejection what's the trend of that rejection he look at the trend he look at the action plan status what's the procedure okay shop floor visualization is poor then you can have some 5s drive procedure 5s audit awards you can give the reference so how you make sure that the shop flow visualization is will not should not remain poor. If you identify the shop flow visualization is not good, then just identification is not enough. You need to have, show the action plan what you are doing so that you improve your shop flow visualization. In a similar way, you link the weak area with some action plan, with some reference, and auditor will be interested in looking at what is the current status. And if you do this in a structured way. After a period of, let's say, three months, six months, one year down the line, there are possibilities that weak area will not remain weak area, and that is what you want. And that's the actual purpose of this particular clause. You don't understand well, how to do, right? So today, you know, I'm also telling you how you can implement this clause, okay? In the similar way, let's say, opportunities, uh, new customers are entering our market, government is opening, let's say, defense sector, there's a single tax taxation for simplification of business, so if the government, let's say, is opening for defense sector, there are possibilities that your organization can get into defense or the space or the new technology or the, let's say, electrical vehicles are coming. Government is promoting electrical vehicles. There's opportunity that you can get into electrical vehicle segment, right? Electric vehicle segment, okay? Now, threats. Threats are those, right, uh, which are, uh, like, because of which your business may go down, let's say, competition from China, uh, or uh, that, that this company, let's say they were working in the uh, engine related parts and they say the electrical vehicles will result into a loss of engine related business. So to mitigate that, what they need to do to mitigate that, they need to work on business diversification. I know one company where managing director, he was looking at some new businesses. He said that after 10 years down the line or five, five ten, 10 years down the line, my engine related parts business will go down so i need to look at some other alternative and he was looking to get into battery segment <laughs> he was you know he was willing to install the battery plant and he was also willing to get into food sector so here like uh, definitely as i said like threats and opportunities gen in general like management is responsible for making action plan but when it comes to internal issues uh, like uh, strength and weakness especially the weak area there it is expected that you make uh, identify your weak area not only you identify your weak area but you also like uh, take action plan and also show the what's the progress what's the status okay so let's do a quick summary uh what we have studied today so we talked about like uh, what is context of the organization right so when you talk about the context of the organization it means that uh, the combination it's a combination of internal and external issues which can have an effect on organization in achieving its objective, okay? So what uh, is internal and external issues? So internal issues are within the organization, 
where you have direct control external issues are those which uh, you may not have direct control over that and they are external to organization what could be example of internal issue your strengths your weak areas could be example of internal issues and what could be example of external issues like political economic or social pastoral analysis basically um, economy environment legal these are, are the like uh, this could be example of your external issues or external issues you can also classify into as opportunities and threats what is the difference between opportunities and threats opportunities are those activities which help your organization to grow those outside factors which help your organization to grow threats are those outside factors which actually can result into a loss of business so also you need to timely identify these opportunities you need can capitalize and threats you can mitigate by taking action prior weak area you need to focus upon and that's a general responsibility in general responsibility of your head of the departments or people working in your organization they identify their weak area and then they make the appropriate action plan on timely basis and monitor those action plan so we see what are the difference between monitoring and uh, review so when it comes to monitoring it specify that at a regular interval there is, is a set frequency when it comes to review that means you study do, you do some analysis and it is expected that there will be some action plan coming out of that review that's a general interpretation at what frequency you should carry out this internal and external issue review it's up to you to identify in general 6 months is good enough you should not go beyond beyond uh, one year who is responsible for identification of internal and external issues your organization cross functional team you can identify they might be responsible for identification or else for internal internal issues you can make hods head of a department responsible for identification of internal issues and your top management might be responsible for identification of external issues what methodologies you can deploy you can identify swot strength weakness opportunities and threats or you can also identify pastel analysis political economical social technology environmental or uh, and then legal you can deploy this methodology to identify the external issues okay so friends we today we discussed about uh, why do we need to identify context of organization and i also have shown you a simpler example there are more complex example which we actually uh, you know cover in our um, advanced program in our intro auditor training program if you want to study and also have a look at uh, like our trainings so you can visit our website www.submastery.com www.submasteryr.com and you can also have a look at our paid offering and i welcome you just feel free to visit our website and we also have an app which is available in android which is also available in ios you can also visit uh, and download our app okay so thank you very much for uh, today's session okay so friends like uh, as i said that uh, this will be a short session every day i'll be doing um, these sessions taking this session so if you have any question uh, you can definitely yeah you can you can you can you can you know um, raise hand and you can type your question in chat i'll be happy to help if you have any question i'll be happy to help you can type your question in the chat or you can raise hand and uh, i can unmute yeah mahesh go ahead and you can ask your question yes krishna you can ask your question yeah this is additional session uh, free session we uh, free series we have started so we'll be taking some clause and we'll look at some example no we are not covering complete iitf is not covered here yes you can ask me any question i'll be happy to yes mahesh you can you can you can ask is it important to identify context of organization yes absolutely it is mandated to identify context of the organization methodology you can use any but swot methodology is very popular strength weakness opportunities and threats this this methodology is much popular 
ज्यादा पॉपुलर तो शॉर्ट मैथोलॉजी है नो कृष्णा कुमार वी डोंट प्रोवाइड बीआरसी एज ऑफ नाउ बीआरसी ट्रेनिंग वी डोंट डू एज ऑफ नाउ मे बी डिमांड इज देयर वी कैन प्रोवाइड we provide lead auditor training for and you can identify them at 6 month interval or one year interval but should not go beyond one year interval yeah we will update this session later in 30 day challenge abhi nahi maybe give us 2 uh, to 3 days time tomorrow also we'll meet at 10 pm okay so if any other question or else i'll be winding up Do you enjoy today's session? Short session. Yeah, Deepak, your voice not audible. Your voice not audible. Changing room, Azad. So much now. Sorry, I think uh, can't hear you. Yeah. ठीक है फ्रेंड्स सो डिड यू एंजॉय दिस टुडे सेशन टुडे डिड यू एंजॉय टुडे शॉर्ट शॉर्ट सेशन वी वी थिंक दैट वी शुड ऑर्गेनाइज मोर सेशन लाइक दिस शॉर्ट सेशन शॉर्ट सेशन लाइक दिस वी थिंक वी शुड ऑर्गेनाइज मोर सच शॉर्ट सेशन इन फ्यूचर यस ओ आई थिंक इट इज एडमिन एंड आई हैव केप्ट इट एज होस्ट एंड पैनलिस्ट ओनली या डेफिनेटली वी शुड राइट ओके थैंक्स श्योर या भगवान यस सुरेंदर थैंक्स किशोर श्योर महेश यस बलविंदर गेट सो थैंक यू वेरी मच फ्रेंड्स लेट्स मीट टुमॉरो टेन पी एम थैंक यू वेरी मच गुड नाइट टेक केयर थैंक्स गुड नाइट भगवान ध्यानेश्वर कृष्ण कुमार महेश निखिल रविंदर सर्वानंद इस लाइव सतीश उल्लास विश्वास भगवान तू पे बलविंदर या थैंक यू वेरी मच गुड नाइट टेक केयर महेश गुड नाइट थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक्स अलॉट बाय थैंक यू थैंक यू सिल्वा थैंक यू